All right, in this video, we're going to look at what's known as substitution. Substitution is a pretty simple concept. You, I'm sure you're already familiar with the idea that in maths, we can sometimes put letters in the place of numbers. Well, whenever we do that, if we then go on to say what each letter equals, if A turns out to equal 2, and B turns out to equal 5, and C turns out to equal 7, then we can replace these letters in this um, in this expression with those numbers, given that they've we've been told that a equals two, b equals five, and c equals seven. So when we do that, it's often a good idea to put the numbers in brackets. So we've replaced a with two. We've substituted a for two, and we've we're going to substitute five instead of b, and we're going to substitute seven instead of c. So what we end up with, because this was a times b times c, that's what it means when you've got letters next to each other, it means they're multiplied together. Now we've got 2 times 5 times 7, 2 times 5 is 10, and 10 times 7 equals 70. So this abc becomes 70 when these letters have these values. Let's look at another example. If we had a plus 2b, Okay, if we had, if that was our expression, and we want to know what does that actually equal, given the a, b, c have these values, then we just substitute the values in to a, into the expression. So a becomes two, and we keep our plus sign there, and then we've got the two here. It's two times b, and we'll put the b inside some brackets, and b is actually five. So we've got two plus two times five. Two times five is ten plus 2 is 12. So you can see how it works. You just have to substitute the value in, the given value for that letter, into the expression, and then simplify whatever you get at the end. Just substitute the values in, and then let, it, let the result take care of itself. Okay, one maybe slightly tricky thing is when you've got, um, when you've got to substitute a negative value in. So let's say d equals negative 5. And then we've got an expression like a plus d squared. Okay, that can be a little bit uh, trickier. So all we've got to do is the same thing, follow the rule. We've got a equals 2, so we'll put uh, 2 in place of the a, and then plus. Now d equals negative 5, and this is where the brackets will help us. We'll put the negative 5 there in brackets, and that whatever d is gets squared. So we've got to square whatever d is, and d is negative 5. So 2 plus negative 5 squared, negative 5 squared is negative 5 times negative 5. When you've got a negative times a negative, it becomes positive. 5 times 5 is 25. So it becomes 25. So we've just got to, we've just got to put in the 25 in place of the negative 5 squared. So it's 2 plus 25 which equals 27. So you can see how that works. Let's do a couple more just so we, we know we've got it down pat. Okay, let's say these are the values that are given to us. x equals 5, y equals negative 3, and z equals negative 2. And let's come up with a few expressions that involve those, uh, those values. Let's say we've got x divided by y. Okay, again, all we've got to do, wherever we've got x, we've got to put 5 in there. So we'll put 5 instead of x. And we can put brackets around it, but when it's on its own, it's, there's not really much need to do that. And for y, we're going to replace it with negative 3. 5 divided by negative 3 just is negative 5 over 3. I guess you can write it as negative 1 and 2 thirds, if you, uh, if you prefer that but this would be just fine. All right, let's try another one. What if we had 2x minus 3y, and then that's multiplied by z. The 3y is multiplied by z. Again, just substitute the values in. 2 times x becomes 2 times 5. Then we've got minus three and then in brackets we put the y which is negative three and we put the z which is negative two okay so two times five becomes ten 
3 times negative 3 is negative 9. So this becomes negative 9. And that's multiplied by negative 2. And negative times a negative is a positive, and it's 9 times 2, so that's 18. So it becomes positive 18. So we've got 10 minus 18, and that's going to be negative 8. So once you've put the values in, then you can then you can deal with whatever negative and positive issues you've got. Okay, but the key thing is just put the values in at the start and then see what happens. Let it take care of itself. Another way of looking at this uh, particular problem would have been to say, well, that's um, negative 3, and we've got negative 3 times negative 3, which would be positive 9, and then positive 9 times negative 2 would be negative 18. We end up with the same result, but I guess there's two different ways of, of getting there. I think it's a little bit simpler to think of it in terms of 3 times negative 3 and then times that by negative 2 and then uh, leave the minus there. I, I find that a little bit simpler to deal with, but if you find the second way makes more sense, then do it that way. Okay, before we finish up, just uh, we're just going to have a quick look at a couple of uh, kind of rules or principles of algebra. Okay, the first one is the commutative law. The commutative law just says this. When you're doing addition and multiplication, the order doesn't matter. The order doesn't matter when you're doing addition and multiplication. But when you're doing subtraction and division, the order does matter. Okay, that's it simply stated. And here's what that means. If you've got 2 plus 3, that's going to equal the same as 3 plus 2. It doesn't matter what order you do it in, it will be the same. The same goes for multiplication. If you had 3 times 4, that's going to equal the same thing as 4 times 3. The order doesn't matter. Okay, But when you're doing subtraction and division, it's different. 2 minus 3 does not equal 3 minus 2. 2 minus 3 is negative 1, but 3 minus 2 is 1. They don't equal each other. So the order does matter for subtraction, and the same goes for uh, division. 3 divided by 4 does not equal 4 divided by 3. So that's the commutative law. For addition and, and multiplication, the order doesn't matter. For subtraction and division, the order does matter. The associative law is kind of similar, but uh, it, it looks a little bit different. The associate... Oh, I've written it wrong. It's the associative law the associative law, and it says that for addition and multiplication, grouping doesn't matter. For addition and multiplication, grouping doesn't matter. But when you're doing subtraction or division, grouping does matter. Okay, grouping will matter. So what that means is, if you've got 2 plus 3 um, plus 4, and you put some brackets around the 3 and the 4, so grouping them together, that's not going to change the result whether you move the brackets to a different part of the sum. 2 plus 3 plus 4, it'll come out exactly the same. 3 plus 4 is 7, plus 2, so that becomes 9. 2 plus 3 is 5, plus 4, that becomes 9 as well. They're both 9. So the grouping doesn't matter. And that's going to be true for multiplication as well. If you had 3 times 4, and then put this in brackets, 3 times 4 times 5 with that bit in brackets, it's going to be exactly the same as if you put the brackets around the 3 times the 4 instead. Okay, so this is going to be 20. 20 times 3 is 60. This is going to be 3 times 4 is 12. 12 times 5 is 60 again. So it doesn't actually matter where you put the brackets. Uh, addition and multiplication, grouping doesn't matter. But for addition, sorry, for subtraction and division, it will matter. So if we have 2 minus 3 minus 4, and we put some brackets around here, that will not equal it because it it does it will change the result if we move the location of the brackets. Okay, 3 minus 4 will equal negative 1, 
2 minus negative 1 will equal 3 in total. 2 minus 3 would equal negative 1 and negative 1 minus 4 would equal negative 5. So we do not get the same result. They are not equal. It does matter uh, where you put the brackets for subtraction. The same is true for division. If we had 3 divided by 4 divided by 5, that would not equal 3 divided by 4 divided by 5. If you don't trust me, put it into a calculator and you'll see they don't come out to be the same thing. Okay, the other two laws that we need to know about are the identity law and the inverse law. The identity law is very simple. It says adding 0, we could say doesn't matter, or in other words, it doesn't change anything. And, we can all, and the other part of it is that multiplying by 1, multiply by 1, also doesn't matter. It doesn't change anything. So let's say we had 10 and we add 0 to it, it still equals 10. It doesn't change 10 to add 0 to it. Um, the same is true for multiplying by 1. If we've got 10 times 1, it still equals, it still equals 10. So it doesn't change something to add 0 to it or to multiply it by 1. a plus 0 will still equal a, and a times 1 will still equal a as well. It won't change its identity. That's why it's called the identity law. The inverse law says something else. It says that when you multiply by the inverse, multiply by the inverse you get you get 1 and when you when you add the opposite of something to itself add the opposite of something to itself you get 0 okay an example of each of these is if we've got x and we multiply that by the inverse of x which is 1 over x the inverse the multiplicative in inverse of something is just when you put 1 over that thing okay x times 1 over x gives x over x you can imagine x is 1 is x over 1 top times top and bottom times bottom we get x over x and anything divided by itself equals 1 so that's always going to be true, no matter what you've got. If you take the inverse of itself, put it on the bottom, then you're going to end up with the thing on the top divided by the thing on the bottom. It will always equal 1. And the additive inverse of something, or the opposite of itself, let's say we've got x. If you add the additive opposite, which is negative x, add those together, you will always get 0. Whatever it is, whether it's... If it's 100 and you add negative 100, then they will cancel out to zero. That's the inverse law. Okay, let's do a little summary of what we've learned and take down some notes. Okay, so here's a summary of what we've um, learned about substitution. And there's a few, uh, you know, there's a few things to write down and a few examples over here. Um, which you can write down if you'd like. Uh, I haven't written down examples for the associative law, but you can get those from earlier in the video if you'd like to put down examples for that too. And just remember, whenever you see something that's highlighted in yellow as this is, that's something you need to copy down into your workbook. Um, this white box here isn't in yellow, so you don't need to copy down that white box there. Okay, thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it and see you later.